The importance of company culture when seeking to attract and retain workers. From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan, brought to you by Varion. I'm Rob Finfrock with your trusted source for the very latest business aviation news and information. And business aviation is changing, and for the better, not only in matters like new technologies and environmental sustainability, but also in terms of increased access to the industry for new customers and a new workforce. The young professionals entering business aviation, or YOPROs as we call them at NBAA, are not only finding their own places in our industry, they're also helping to define its future. And especially as we seek out new talent to propel business aviation forward, another change might include developing a company culture that welcomes and encourages new perspectives and solutions. That's important no matter what a YoPro's entry point into the industry might be, as today's guests will share with us. We'll begin with Emily Semazar, an intern in a business aviation flight department who's also training toward her CFI certificate. Emily, when did you first consider business aviation as a serious career option? And did you have any concerns about finding your place in the industry? I had an internship in school at a local flight department there. And there was, my main priority was to make sure the airplanes were clean. But they also allowed me to have a bunch of different opportunities through bas- business aviation with them, which was amazing. So that was my start. And I really got to see what their pilot's lifestyles were like compared to maybe an airline pilot. I liked their lifestyle. I felt like they had a great quality of life. And I loved that their department had this family feeling to it. And we were all included and everyone was important and nobody was just a number. So for me, that drew me into business aviation. I also really loved the scholarships, the internships, the mentorships that came along as I progressed and learned more about business aviation. And my only concerns were that it was a very male-dominated field. So sometimes it was really scary because I would be the only female working in my internship. With time, that became less and less scary, but it definitely was a little bit of a concern at first. So I'm very passionate about getting more women into aviation. Achal Patel supports strategic partnerships, mergers and acquisitions, and venture capital acquisitions for a business aviation OEM. My path to business aviation is relatively non-traditional. So I'm an international student in the U.S. I came from India and I studied aerospace engineering. So I was always interested in working at, you know, in the aerospace industry. But when I started job searching junior year, I realized Majority of the roles in the the classic aerospace companies, the Boeings, the Lockheeds, even the SpaceXs of the world, I couldn't join them because I'm not a U.S. citizen. And so I couldn't get any opportunities there. And so I started exploring other opportunities in the aerospace industry, which did not have the national security and ITA restrictions attached to them. And so I stumbled upon the NBAA base conference somehow and ended up getting a small scholarship to attend it from from the university. And I bumped into Ed Bolin. He's also a Jayhawk. He went to the University of Kansas. So he he saw a Jayhawk pin on me and we connected and he started I told him I would love any support he could provide and any opportunities in the industry. And then he started introducing me to folks in the industry and three, four introductions later I was introduced to some folks in my company that I work today and they ended up bringing me on board with on the team to support the strategic partnerships and M&A and corporate venture world, which is still relatively non-traditional in business aviation. Melanie Height View is a captain for Part 135 charter company Open Air, and she also recently started a charter brokerage firm in Idaho. How did you first find your place in business aviation, Melanie? Actually, Emily is a colleague of mine, and I have sort of a similar story to her. We both went to uh, Western Michigan University. So my introduction to it was actually the uh, corporate aviation management class. It was the only class in the program that was sort of geared towards corporate or business aviation. So that was kind of the initial intro, and that led to an internship. I had the opportunity to have a couple of internships in college, one of which is actually the same one that I believe Emily is talking about. But that first internship that I had was incredibly valuable to showing me 
that there is a path other than the airlines in terms of an aviation career. And it was that internship and attending events that really got me interested. My fourth guest today is Latuan Sutton, manager of aviation tax at MySky. And his introduction to the benefits of business aviation came a bit earlier than most. I went to a school called Florida Tech in Melbourne, Florida. So at the time, I actually chose to go there as a collegiate athlete. I had a scholarship to play on the football team. And my first semester of college, I was actually undeclared. Just wasn't really sure what I wanted to do yet. I was leaning towards engineering, but it's really tough to be a full-time collegiate athlete and kind of do engineering, especially at a school like Florida Tech. So I stayed undeclared. And a cool story, my football team at Florida Tech, we were actually the only Division II football program in the state of Florida. So with that cost that happened for us a lot of the times is every time we had an away game, we would have to travel out of state. And a lot of times when you're a collegiate athlete, it's very hard to kind of study, especially when you're going out of state, you know, every other week. So we actually had a booster offer a jet to us. So we were able to actually fly private to about three or four games a year. And Florida Tech had an aviation management program. I then declared there, had an internship, and then a few years later, I'm all the way into business aviation. Did you worry at all, Latuan, about being able to find a role in the industry? Initially, the only concerns I had was that I didn't understand the field well enough. And I wanted to make sure I had longevity in whatever career that I chose. By the time I actually got in and got comfortable and got informed of what the industry has to offer, I knew certainly that I'd be able to build a career here. So that's no longer a concern of mine. Coming up, the role of company culture when searching for a career in business aviation and what Yopros want most from their employers. But first, a word from our sponsor. Take your aviation operations to new heights. Introducing Baryon, formerly known as ATP, your ultimate partner in achieving maximum aircraft uptime. At Baryon, we understand the challenges faced by everyone in aviation. Our industry-leading technology solutions revolutionize aircraft management, so there's no more waiting, no more wondering, and no more wasted effort. Get real-time visibility of your maintenance, inventory, operations, and regulatory data right at your fingertips with an easy-to-use system. Backed by a team of experts with deep aviation knowledge offering 24-7, 365 support. After 50 years in the business, we have built a growing reputation for getting our customers more aircraft uptime. That's why thousands of aircraft operators worldwide have already discovered the power of Varion. Say goodbye to downtime and hello to increased efficiency and profitability. Visit Varion.com to learn more. Varion, let's get you more uptime. We're back now with our discussion about the importance of company culture in not only attracting new workers, but keeping them as well. Again, my guests are Emily Semazar, Melanie Height View, Achal Patel, and Latuan Sutton. And Latuan, building on your comments from before the break, what role did company culture play in your employment search? And what aspects that influence a company's culture did you specifically look out for? I think initially, unless you have connections already that can help you get internships and jobs, most of us probably take whatever we can get. That's unless you have multiple options. So I initially didn't really look into the company culture. Obviously, I wanted to know that I'd be taken care of and that I would be working with competent people, but I don't think I deliberately looked up to see what the culture would be like working at a company. And then once I did get that internship in that first job, I think that opened me up to be able to see a different side and to say, hey, maybe I would like working in a company that behaved more like this, or maybe I would want to work under a manager who mentored me or things like that. So I think, at least for me, it was getting into the industry first and then being empowered enough to be able to say, hey, you know, I want to seek a company with this type of culture. I wouldn't be motivated if I was working in a company with this type of culture. To this day now that I'm a little bit more empowered, I would say leadership plays a a really important role for me. I like to know that I have tasks to do every day, that there's a path to grow 
for whichever role that I uh, agree to be in and that I have the support of the company to basically empower me to make decisions, not only for the company, but on my own as well. I would agree that I didn't really understand how important culture in a company could be for me until I had those internships. I've, I've done a few now and I can understand more so of what I'm looking for in a company and what I'm not looking for. And both are super valuable to me to kind of figure out what pathway I'm going to take. And I think that I'm specifically on the lookout for people who are trying to always be better and they're trying to diversify the workforce and they're involved in the schools and they're getting the younger generation ready to get into business aviation and they want to be able to teach and mentor. So stuff like that is important for me. Great perspectives, Emily. Achal, how about you? I very much agree with Emily and Latuan's experience and, you know, take so far. And that was my case as well. I had literally no idea this industry existed until I attended the base and got to see the the whole scope of it. But when I was in the conversations with the place I work at, the gut feeling I got from those conversations was like, yeah, there seems to be this innovation minded approach to, you know, doing engineering or doing products and delivering the ultimate customer experience is is our tagline for the company. And they had this very like innovative, very entrepreneurial approach to it. That was very attractive to me. And the culture itself, uh, now that I've experienced it, is very tight knit. There's a one team tone to everything. And so things like those, like, you know, being innovative, be, being curious, having competent people, as Latuan mentioned, and also have the one team approach to things. Because, as you know, the company I work at, it's large. So there's a lot of different projects and teams and everything happening. But like this one team, I think, threads the whole company together and I think helps the company culture go above and beyond and help company deliver great results and great aircraft. Melanie, how did company culture influence your search for a job in business aviation? I think I share in that sort of sentiment that early on, uh, company culture wasn't really in my vocabulary yet. And even though it wasn't like a phrase I was familiar with, I was kind of in, you know, in the background looking for that, you know, you don't, you don't hear about people talking about company culture early on in your career, maybe, but you do notice how you're treated when you talk to the people who you might end up working with. So for me, I'm lucky in that I still work with the first company I got hired at as a pilot because I started flight instructing for this company a few years ago. And it's the company that I work for as a charter captain now. What's nice is that as the company has grown and evolved, so to have I, and with that, the culture as well. So for me, it's more a story of retention, I think, than what I was looking out for in the first place. The culture of the company as it is now is the reason that I'm still working for the company, for sure. What impressed you in particular about the culture at your employer, Melanie, that made you feel welcomed and valued? All of the leadership at this company through uh, my entire experience with them has always had a pretty standard, pretty solid open door policy. You know, if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to ask, uh, come on in. And it's, it's kind of evolved into this relationship where with most of the people at the company, specifically leadership, I can call them and, you know, they'll make time for me and we'll have a, an hour long phone conversation, just kind of getting caught up both in in business aspects, maybe whatever it was that the call was about in the first place. And, you know, by the end of the we're talking about our personal lives, that kind of thing. Latuan, how does your company's culture make you feel like an important part of the community? I work at a company that's, I wouldn't call us a startup, but we are probably in the category of a small company and we are growing very quickly. And I think a lot of times with very small companies, you have a very tight knit culture with everyone there just because there aren't that many employees. So a lot of people you work with on the day to day basis. And I think it's very easy for us to be recognized because pretty much all the work that we have to do, we know exactly who's responsible for it. So if something is being done very well. It's very easy to know who exactly did the work and who did a good job. And I think it's very easy for us to recognize those people. And I do see a lot of times one thing that we make a priority is making sure we recognize in a, an employee of the year, a runner up and even um, a tertiary employee of the year, just to make sure everyone kind of feels valued and feel like they're belonging. And I think that goes a long way to making sure people want to stay with the company because they feel like 
they're actually making an impact. And I felt that myself over the past year. I was lucky enough to win a 40 under 40 award in NBA this year. And one thing that my company did was, you know, they made it a huge deal. We actually had a dinner. So, you know, things like that goes a really long way in making sure you want to stay at your company and feel valued and make you feel welcome, not only in the industry, but at the current company. What are you looking for in a company's culture, Emily? Yeah. So for my first internship where I was, you know, really doing the dirty work and cleaning those airplanes, it was amazing for me to have leadership and my bosses come out every day and tell me thank you and how grateful they are for me. And that is so important to me to feel valued by them, even no matter what job you're doing. And I think it's important to appreciate every job in a company. So I really loved that from them. And they allowed me being a student to just, you know, network with them and help build my network. And they're honestly responsible for me sitting here right now. They helped me so much. And I think that they completely eased my concerns. And they're such a wonderful company. So I'm really grateful for that. As Emily just mentioned, I think the exposure and the recognition from C-suite has been pretty incredible for me personally. I am doing things at the company that are relatively non-business aviation related, but you know we are working to bring them into our world to keep growing. That leads me to have a lot of good exposure to my CEO and the C-suite, and they are really good at not just appreciating the work we do, but like they listen and they actually, you know, consider the work we do and the effort we put and the initiatives we take very seriously. And I think that's been very impressive to me personally. Indeed. So Achal, how would you recommend business aviation employers in general examine their culture to be more attractive to today's workforce? Our industry is foundationally driven by relationships. It's in our DNA to have a relationship focused industry And I think that's very much rolling down into my company, at least, because that's the only exposure I have of the industry. It makes me very appreciated as an employee, as a part of the company. And I think that's something that could be used if we we tell the others outside of the industry, especially today's workforce, that, you know, business aviation is a giant industry, but it's also very tight knit because it's very relationship driven. And it's also the place where the cutting edge and the innovation of the aviation and aerospace world is happening. I think those are two really big things I think the industry and the members involved in the industry should do. As an undergrad at at the university, I had no idea there was an entire industry supporting business aviation. So I think we need to get a little more public. We like to stay under the radar to an extent when it comes to telling students and you know future workforce members about our industry and the potential and the opportunities we have. But I think there's a lot of incredible potential we have and opportunities we have for the, the, the workforce of today. And I think that's how I would go about it. Latuan, what advice do you have for employers in making sure their company culture is a good fit for new employees? before you even go to look for employees is seeing, hey, you know, what do we need to get done here? What goals do we have? What are our values and our mission? And, you know, what's important to us? And I think when I had, um, I actually researched a few months back, there's actually about 1.2 million jobs in business aviation. And I think as an employer, sometimes you have to realize maybe every employee out there in the market won't fit in within your company. But I think what is important is finding those people who do fit into your culture and that actually feed into it and make it better. So, you know, if I could draw this comparison, SpaceX is a company that works very hard. Their people do a lot of overtime. And to some people, that is great. They love to work a lot. And maybe it's because they support the mission and life in space and things like that. So that makes them want to go above and beyond and work these extra hours. But, you know, you also have people out there that want to be um, more involved with their family. They want to prioritize their personal lives more. And, you know, SpaceX probably wouldn't target those people because they understand that the workload that they have wouldn't fit into those people's lives. So I think as an employer, it's really important to go out and make sure Everyone knows exactly what your culture is, what it's like to work for you, the things that you provide. And if you're an employee within my company, what you're going to get out of it. I don't think there's a fault in saying, hey, you know, maybe this isn't the best company for you to work for because 
we value things that may not be within your values as a person. So just like as employees, we can find companies that suit us. Employers should also find employees that suit their culture as well. Melanie, how about you? For a period of years, I was the chief flight instructor at the flight school that I worked at in Virginia, and I was responsible for hiring new flight instructors. And I think the real importance is in looking inward at how your company culture exists before you consider what does this look like on the outside, you know, to people who we might be looking to hire. So a lot of what I would do when I was looking to hire a new uh, new flight instructor is I would ask the current employees about their opinion of the company culture. And again, that might have not been the vocabulary word that I used. I, I wouldn't sit them down and say, how do you feel about you know, our culture? But I would ask them, you know, how are you doing? How is this feeling? What do you think we need? Is what I would ask the employees themselves. And you know, that's a way to kind of learn about the culture of the company that you are working with and for. But it's also a way to establish a culture. Like having those conversations is what's showing those employees that they're valued. Emily? I think that it's so important to listen to everybody's concerns. And something I feel like I've seen being a recent graduate was that a lot of students were becoming more concerned with having a good quality of life. And I think there's a lot of business aviation companies that can tailor to that. Specifically for my internship, that was something that attracted me. But it's important that we are spreading the word and we're doing the internships and the scholarships and the mentorships so these students have more of a pathway to learn about business aviation and to get involved and really creating that next generation of pilots and helping this pilot shortage. I know I'm trying to get more women into the field of being involved with the Women in Aviation group And I think that that is really important for more companies to begin attending those conferences and sharing their goals with helping diversify our workforce and make their company a better place. And I think it's important that they have those steps to continue making everyone comfortable. If I may say, I think it bodes really well for our industry that the four of you are part of the business aviation community. And thanks again so much for sharing your thoughts today. In the coming weeks, we'll hear perspectives from aviation managers about the importance of company culture in the business aviation workplace and in attracting and retaining employees. So be on the lookout for that episode. And if you're a current or aspiring business aviation yo pro, check out NBAA's resources for you at nbaa.org forward slash yo pro and nbaa.org forward slash jobs. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan episodes at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts, including by asking your virtual assistant or connected device. Of course, you can also download Flight Plan directly from nbaa.org. I'm Rob Finfrock. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for a new episode of Flight Plan. Wow, right, base, sending out 3,500. Right, we got him inside. We're slowing back to 170.